HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, members of a number of local fire departments who are part of the District 14 Regional Dive Team trained in Ashland. We have photos of the restored Claflin Fountain at the Town Common and our question of the week asks, did you want the Olympics in Boston? But first, after months of planning and weeks of work, the restored Claflin Fountain has been installed at the Town Common. Here is a look at some of the scenes of the project, and we hear from some of the people who helped make the project happen. My name's Lenny Holden. I've lived in town all my life. Um, I've been on Parks and Rec, I've been a selectman. Uh, last year, the Parks and Rec Commission asked me if I'd be the chairman of the um, Restoration Committee. Since then, we have uh, put it off a bid. We've got, uh, uh, we had a, a lot of qualified bidders. We chose Picasso Studios and uh, Natick as our, our, our um, conservator, the one that's doing all the work. Uh, right now, the, the fountain uh, was disassembled in April. It was um, wheel abraded. They used um, steel balls to get all the rust off. Uh, we had to have two sections, a bowl and a, a column that were missing. Uh, the stories that uh, it went over in the hurricane of 38. Other stories were that it was uh, some uh, seniors from uh, high school, the old high school, that blew it up. But nevertheless, we've had those uh, re-sculpted and recast. Everything now, uh, you can see behind me, with it's a new foundation. Uh, it went real deep. We're never going to have it tip over on us. The other uh, structure is the pump assembly. It's state-of-the-art. It'll make sure it keeps enough water in there. Uh, the pieces, uh, some are at a studio in Canton, and um, there were uh, the missing pop pieces were uh, cast by uh, Wollaston um, Boundary, I guess it is, and right now they're being uh, ready to be painted. It's uh, an epoxy paint. It, um, it'll last uh, forever. We uh, just have to have a maintenance program yearly. They'll come out, check it over, touch up any of the, the bronze uh, acumens, um, and any, any pits or anything like that they'll take care of. It, this one lasted uh, over 100 years, and um, with the improvements that we've done, it, it, who knows how long it could last. Uh, this next Tuesday, September 1st, we'll be bringing all the pieces here and start to reassemble it. There's a big bowl, then a column, then a small, uh, medium-sized bowl, then the new column that was sculptured, and another bowl that was re-sculpted, and the top, and a new finial on the top. And hopefully it'll all come together and be running for uh, the start of our celebration on September 11th. Now, how long has this whole process taken overall? Well, it's been years. We've been talking about it. Um, they, they brought me in, I think it was last fall, and um, we got a committee of five. Uh, Eric Sauna from Parks and Rec, Tim Kilduff, um, Jeff Ferber, and Stacy Spies. Um, and we've all been meeting. We were meeting, uh, made a selection of who was going to do it. We've had a few meetings since then. We've worked with uh, town departments like the Historic District Commission, and the uh, town engineer. Um, we weren't sure about the color. We were going to wait, wait until the last minute and just try to find something historical. But when uh, Jeff Picaccio took the uh, uh, bronze embellishments off, found the original color to be black. So we're going to keep it historic and keep the uh, original black. And with the, the, the embellishments, the, the scroll work, uh, Jeff has restored the ones that were, uh, that are, that were existing and he's cast the other ones, and I think the aged bronze will just uh, pop out on the, the dark black background. <laughs> there you go. 
Fox and Rec, we are the kind of the managers and custodians of the common itself. So when the idea came up to restore and refurbish the fountain, um, we helped coordinate along with the CPC committee, the trails committee, and the uh, town engineer. Pretty much a big collaboration among multi multi town departments and committees. The fountain was here in a dilapidated state, half of it missing, and was more of an eyesore than an attraction. Part of our uh, idea was let's turn this fountain into what it was when it was installed in 1907 as the Kaplan Fountain, restore it to its original greatness. And quite frankly, there had been many efforts over the years to do that, but they had all fallen just short of starting and getting it going. So we pulled everything together. We hired uh, historians and whatever to find out what it looked like. We put it out to bed and came up with uh, 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 a company that could do this. In fact, we had many companies bid on it that had the expertise to do it. And here we are, the thing has been restored, it's being installed today, and we feel it will be the major attraction other than the gazebo of our time to come. This has sort of been like a multi-year effort of trying to get the, the funding and the whole project going. Years ago, we initially uh, allocated the money to do research on it, and what we thought was enough money to get the fountain done. And over the years, we found out it was going to cost a lot more. So it's been actually a couple of years in the in the making and getting the uh, approved funding from CPC. We just think it's one of these things in the town where the money from, from historic was be, would be put to very good use, and we're very pleased to participate in this. Getting the funding, this started almost 10 years ago with the initial funding. And uh, the final vote on the funding was about a year ago. And the, the idea was to get it done in time for this, for this celebration this year. And it uh, looks like we are right on target. One of the great things about the fountain being uh, completed during the 300th anniversary year is when everything is said and done after this year ends, the only standing remembrance of the 300th anniversary will be this fountain. There will be a time capsule, it will be buried, and no one will see it for a century, but for all intents and purposes, this will be the lasting tribute to our 300th anniversary. Since the fountain installation, the Hopkinton Garden Club has planted a beautiful garden around the fountain, and the water has been turned on. We will have much more from the project on HCAM in the coming weeks. The District 14 dive team is made up of members from nearly a dozen local fire departments. Members of the Regional Dive Rescue Team recently took some time to talk with HCAM News. The Massachusetts Fire District 14 dive team trained at Aggregate Quarry in Ashland. Divers, tenders, command, and support were on hand to assist the divers in reaching depths nearly 70 feet. Yeah, today we're uh, doing a day-long dive here at the Squarry in Ashland. It'll give the team a chance to um, get two dives in. For a diver, the uh, depth level is about 60 to 70 feet deep, and it'll give them a chance to uh, see who some of our deep water divers are. And some of them might be uh, more comfortable in shallow water. And um, we've got uh, divers here, we have support teams, uh, dive tenders, uh, we have a uh, safety officer, incident commander, operations officers, uh, myself and another fellow uh, checking every diver in before they go in the water. We go through all their equipment to make sure that everything's, uh, that they have all the equipment they need and it's all working properly. Up to now we've been meeting every month for four hours and uh, we didn't meet last month. We decided to do it uh, this month for the eight hour dive and right now they're um, there's some discussion whether we'll keep up the eight hours every other month or four hours every month. Um, one interesting thing we did do uh, this past winter, we were in Framingham at a beach at Lonard Pond in February, and the guys did an um, a, a ice drill, uh, diving under ice. They went, it was set up a kind of triangle, they swam the three points and came back. The regional dive team is made up of several towns, including Framingham, Hudson, Ashland, Hopkinton, Northborough, Maynard, Natick, Sherborne, Weston, Lincoln, and Holliston.
the uh, state's moving toward centralization of teams, and by having a uh, central team here, one of coordinates, um, it's easy to uh, bring out divers. If one town had an incident and they just started themselves and realized they needed assistance, you're losing a certain amount of time. This way, um, one person can call the Ashland Fire Department, which is the uh, uh, dispatch center for District 14. They'll get a call from the department saying the dive team's needed. He or she, the dispatcher, can activate the team. So divers then can immediately proceed to where they require you to go. In case the time we're going to, divers might be away or they might not be on duty or um, might be a team uh, a community that doesn't even have any divers, so we're able to come in right away and commence the, the operation. For an individual fire department, for uh, Hopkinton, for example, we have a couple people that are trained to be divers. Um, you need more than that. You need to start off with about five divers to do a, some form of a rescue or recovery type of a dive. For a small town like that, it's just too much of a demand on the resources that we have. But if we do it with a regional approach and share with our neighbors, so we have um, divers that come from Ashland or Framingham, that we can deliver that, but it's not such an impact to a local community, uh, cost and manpower-wise. One of the goals of the day was to test the depth capabilities of each diver. These training drills tell us each diver's capabilities, whether he's a deep diver, 60 feet plus, or if he's a shore-based diver, which is zero to 30 feet. 33 feet is one atmosphere. People who have trouble with their sinuses can't go below that first atmosphere. People that don't have sinus trouble, uh, our deep depth is 100 feet, mainly because we only have 100 feet of calm rope. Each diver is going to do two dives today, one shore-based dive, and then from shore-based he'll go to a deep dive and see how deep he can get. Vinny Zanella of the Framingham Fire Department talked about his role for the day. He says it's six to seven feet, so he's got... Uh, today at this dive drill, District 14 dive drill, I'm dive team ops. We're running two simultaneous operations. One is a boat dive at a depth of 60 feet, and the other is a shore-based um, sweep pattern that we're running with a diver, a backup diver, and a 90% diver for both dives. And we're trying to locate a couple of missing objects and see if these guys can find them. Uh, my responsibility is to report to the IC, incident commander, and keep all the divers and the boats in check and um, safe. And IC's job is to get me more resources than anything I need. Deputy Chief of the Hopkinton Fire Department, Stephen Slammon, talked about how the regional dive team has been used in Hopkinton. My name is Steve Slammon. I'm the Deputy Fire Chief for Hopkinton, and I uh, help out as a uh, assistant for the uh, District Chiefs of District 14 to coordinate the dive team. So Hopkinton has a couple of members that are involved in this regional team, and uh, today we're doing training that you probably talked to uh, with Pete about. Uh, I'm representing uh, a simulation of an incident commander if they went into somebody's community, so I'm uh, representing the Ashland Fire Chief right now, and uh, we work on coordinating their operations with what they would do when they go to a local community who has an incident. So that's what we're training for. We've had two deployments so far this summer. I'd say that's probably an average year is probably something two to four type of uh, incidents for water rescue. And um, that's been over roughly six communities we've covered. We're in the process of spreading out and covering 22 towns in the, the whole district. That's kind of our vision for next year. We just brought in about 10 new divers from the northern part of the district, which would be like Hudson and Maynard and Weston and Lincoln and all in that area. So uh, we expect to have our um, deployment rate go up quite a bit. Mike Terosian of the Ashland Fire Department showed off the communication vehicle the dive team uses. So this is CAR 14. CAR 14 supports the district's communication needs at large incidents, whether it be a uh, big fire at a house or a dive uh, incident such as we're doing today or technical rescue team because we have so many uh, firefighters coming in from different cities and towns, not everyone has the same frequency of radios. So what this here gives us all the different bands of radio and allows us to patch them together. The biggest uh, reason we do that is so everybody can hear the same communication at the same time. And communication is key on any incident. The District 14 dive team certainly works hard to help save lives. Throughout the last several months, there was a big debate on whether or not 
The city of Boston could handle hosting the Olympic Games. A few weeks ago, the plug was pulled on Boston's bid to host the Olympics. Our question of the week asks, did you want to see the Olympics in Boston? Um, I think it would be cool, but I'm probably grateful that it's not. I just wouldn't want to deal with the influx of people and traffic and whatnot. No Olympics. I think it would be good for the city. We need the money coming in. I have no great opinion about that, so um, yeah, I'm fine with it. I was fine either way. I am not sure. You know, I wish that we had more time and information to figure it out because it does seem like a loss, but it could have been bad. I don't know. It would have been too expensive. We would have paid for the whole thing. Even though they say no, we would have. Uh, I'm on the fence on that one. I think it would have been cool, but it would have been a mess, too. And we would have paid for it, right, Cliff? We would have. I'm glad that the Olympics aren't coming to Boston. I think it would be cool, but I, don't, I just don't think the city can handle it, especially with the way the transportation is and everything now. And I understand they were going to renovate some things before the Olympics got here, but I just think it's just too small of a city and they just don't have what's needed to handle those kinds of crowds. So I'm pretty glad that the Olympics won't be coming here. Um, no desire to see the Olympics in Boston right now. Traffic, expense, and then two years later, it's what do we do with all that extra stuff that we spent a fortune building in the first place. So yeah, not too worried about the Olympics not coming here. I kind of wish the Olympics were uh, in Boston because that'd be really cool. On the one hand, I think it would have been nice to have them here. On the other, I don't think we were really ready for it. So. I think I'm okay with the with the Olympics not being here in Boston. No, I don't. I don't. I didn't think that would be a good idea. Go LA. I am ecstatic that the Olympics are coming to Boston. Yeah, there might have been plans for uh, the infrastructure to be repaired, such as the transit uh, system. Uh, but you know what? I lived through the big dig. Nothing's going to come close to it. That still hasn't fixed all our traffic problems. No way the Olympics are going to uh, fix any of the infrastructure to go with it. So yes, so happy it's not coming. We want your opinion too. Head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash HKMTV, and let us know what your opinion is by commenting under the video or on our website, hcam.tv, in the comment section under the article. Coming up next on HKM News, we will show you some more scenes from the Claflin Fountain installation, and Courtney will let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds. We also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. The team that put together the Claflin Fountain worked very hard to get the major pieces installed. It took nearly 20 hours over two days to install the key components of the fountain. Sculptor of the fountain, Jeff Bacasio, Keith Murray of New England Air, Al Medeiros, and Paul Ferreira of OB Hill Trucking and Rigging worked tirelessly to get the fountain ready for the 300th anniversary celebration. Here is a look at some of the scenes of the grueling process. Thank you. 
Be on the lookout for much more from the Claflin Fountain installation airing soon on HCAM. With the 300th anniversary celebration weekend behind us and school in session, things are very busy on the HCAM channels. For everything coming up, we turn things over to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On a new Hopkinton coffee break on Friday, September 11th at 8 p.m., Laura Davis joins the hosts to discuss her CSA and the Hopkinton Farmer's Market. We went on Google Earth and looked at where the open space was in the area and then started contacting those owners who I found the owners on our tax assessment database. Mm -hmm. And I started phoning, and the first one was Bruce Carlin, who is our town moderator, and right. he's on uh -huh. uh, one of the HCAM physician yeah. shows. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, absolutely, Laura, you come over and use my land. On Tuesday, September 15th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. The meeting will also air on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. On Wednesday, September 16th at 8.30 p.m., Kathy McDonald shares how her passions led her to open her store and how the store helps those in need around the world on a new Business Matters. One of them, they were so excited they had only sold their product in the United States one other time. So we'll be bringing them in in August. And what they do is they take old cloth that's being discarded and make these beautiful stuffed animals that are amazing. On a new Meet Your Neighbor on Friday, September 18th at 9 p.m., Rose Cratian shares how she came to Hopkinton, how she created her garden, and knowledge of the plants in her garden. We found that under this much soil she had laid black plastic and there were little holes here and there. Mm -hmm. So we spent the first year or so ripping up plastic. On Sunday, September 20th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from September 15th will air. If you want to know when all of our upcoming programs will air, the HCAM Insider Newsletter is a great way to get the latest HCAM happenings. Head over to hcam.tv slash news updates where you can sign up for the Insider as well as our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, scenes from the 300th anniversary celebration weekend will be available on our website, hcam.tv, as well as on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Be sure to head over to our website and social media pages to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy birthday, Hopkinton. <laughs>